Despite many people predicting it to be a very close match between Winter, Winter Fox and CLG, it didn't seem to really pan out that way. Capping off a day of disappointing games. Uh, yeah, no, Link, going into that match, did you expect it to be so one-sided? Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling that it might be. Uh, I wasn't really sure because we, we haven't really scrimmed at Winter Fox that much, right? So whenever we play versus a team that we haven't really scrimmed versus, like, especially like Coast last or two weeks ago or something like that, uh, we kind of get this like fear, you know, it's like, shoot, we're doing so well, but what happens if they like become so good all of a sudden, you know, right. but after like the first three minutes of the game, I think it was like, all right, we got this. Yeah. So, so three minutes in. Yeah, I think well, it was like four or five minutes, right? When I got the triple kill or I got three kills yeah. and I was like, all right, this game's over as long as we don't do anything really stupid. And we like laid out all of our win conditions, made sure that we fought the right fights. We like completely destroyed them in vision, I think. And it was such a clean game. Yeah. What do you think about Winter Fox at the moment and what's holding them back? Because so many people feel as though Winter Fox is supposed to be this good team, right? Like they've got all these good players and this kind of thing. For some reason, that doesn't really pan out. They've got a lot of Koreans, for instance. Like why, why is the Korean power not just helping them win? Uh, I feel like the biggest problem is um, they don't really have like a play style that I can kind of really look to, right? You know, they have like this really good mid laner, pole vaulter, and uh, people kind of hype him up a lot and like people are saying like Pobalter if he's in that position he can carry and stuff like that but he's never really put in the, into that position because I feel like the team doesn't really utilize his strengths in like his laning phase. Uh, what it feels like to me is most of the times Helios is actually trying to help the other side lanes from like not feeding yeah. especially I feel like that uh, Avalon is really inexperienced and I think he's really like he's not like a really top like you know top caliber player so because of that Helios is, is already trying to like help him, you know, yeah. they're at like a deficit from the top lane. And then bottom lane, I think um, because they don't, it's like Altec, he's, he's not Korean, he's just Canadian. Yeah. And then he's laning with a Korean. So I, I would assume that there's probably some, you know, miscommuni miscommunication going on there. So uh, from the looks of it, as soon as they go into the game, it just feels like they're at a communication like loss, you know, like top lane already needs help. Bottom lane probably is going to need help because I would assume that their laning isn't in sync or something like that. Mid lane is probably going to be even ahead or even behind because it just depends on if Helios is there. And because of that, I, I just don't think they have a good play style where they can play around. So it shows them as so inconsistent. So you don't think Avalon is a top player? Yes. Because, I mean, I already see him go to that lane. Okay, okay. Well, well I mean, sometimes he goes bottom, right? Because he, oh, yeah. he, yeah, yeah, you know, it's that 1v2. So you're saying you're saying Avalon is a bottom player. <laughs> well, I, he lane he lane versus me mid today, so I don't know, man. <laughs> He's everywhere. Yeah. This is very inconsistent. Let's put it that way, right? Yeah. All right. High last week said in an interview with me that he feels as though CLG is the best team in North America, which was very confusing to me because he had just beaten you, uh, and then like the week before, I think it was TSM beat you as well. So. Why? Why is he saying this? Is it? Are you guys secretly the best, despite not being the best? Uh, I think in scrims we always tend to play pretty well. I don't know. Like, um, from whenever we play versus everyone else, it just feels like, you know, we're behind and then we make a comeback and we win, right? Or it's like we're ahead and then we throw. It's like one of those scenarios. And I feel like it's good to be in both scenarios because it just means that we have good macro strategies. And like when it really comes down to it, like. I think people have said this in the past, right? Like we have trouble with team fighting and we all recognize this and that's what we're all like working on. And, and literally we're like nitpicking every mistake right now in scrims and even in, in LCS games. Yeah. And that's what we're, we're trying to focus on. And you know, if you look at our games versus like TSM and Cloud9, we, we're always at an advantage in terms of map control. And you know, all these like small parts of in like 2v1 or even in just in laning. But then when it comes down to the team fights, we always like mess up, you know? Yeah. Maybe I like ulti myself with Sandra and then I do nothing in the team fight and then, you know, stuff like that happens. And what it really boils down to is making sure that us CLG like communicate effectively with each other and trying to make sure we figure out the win conditions for the team fight. And you know, like who goes on who, how do we play this? We gotta watch for flings, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So to quote a very wise coach, you guys are always winning until you lose. Sure. Yeah. In these games, at least. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Because that was—it's a little joke. It's a little <laughs> reference to a little quote he made about Scara, your coach. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. You know, 
Uh, okay, realistically, though, you identify the issue right now as, as being team fights. Uh, it's kind of strange because, you know, unlike laning or something like that, you can try to improve your lane mechanics or try to improve your synergy if you're an need to carry with your support or something like that. But team fights are so much harder. Like, how do you, how, how does a team who identifies team fights as being the issue, like, solve those issues or solve, solve that? Is it, like you said, just by nitpicking stuff or is it much bigger than that? I mean, like, no matter what, right, you can always improve at every aspect of the game, right? Like, you can always say, yeah, we can get better at laning, right? right. But the biggest problem is our team fights. And when you, like, talk about team fights, I don't know. It's just about making sure that everyone is talking, you know? Because there, there's people who will bring up ideas and then, like, what, what needs to happen is really, like, a discussion. Like, five people, like, talking to each other in the middle of a game. Yeah. And sometimes that's really hard because, well, you're microing a character at the same time, making sure you're not dying, keeping tags, tabs of, like, what items you need to buy, what items they have. And during this whole time, you have to make sure that you can figure out how to win the team fight. And that's something that just develops over, like, a long period of time in practice, right? Um, but one of the biggest problems with um, us is that there's so many teams in LCS that have so much trouble just getting them the, the basics of laning down. So when we, when we scrim them, when we 1v1 or 1v2, what ends up happening is like GG, remake, 5 minutes in, 10 minutes in, 15 minutes in, right? And this, this happens a lot. And because we're so good at that like portion of the game, I feel like, we can't practice the, the team fight stage. Right. So when it really comes down to it, it's like we only really see the team fights in like LCS sometimes. So that's when we have to really like focus on that specific right. team because it's such a rare occasion to come up you know basically i'm saying is we don't get to practice team fight that much but when we do we really need to sit down and look at it analyze it and get good at that have you considered just in scrims and i'm only half joking when i say this like sandbagging early games so that you can get at least to the team fights later on uh no because it just becomes really unrealistic sometimes right because there's a lot of scenarios where Oh hey, Bjergsen is ten and zero on Ari. Now it's like, well, how do we team fight versus this when he just one shots all of us? You know, yeah. it's much more realistic to have like a game where it's like the Cloud Nine game where everyone is even, like zero and zero, and then the first dragon comes up, right? But you know, in scrims, it's like people don't people just die to random ganks. It'll be like fifty kills in and by like ten minutes or something like that or twenty minutes, you know, and it's very unrealistic and it, it just leads to really like. Oh sure, we misplayed this team fight, but Delif was like ten and zero, so he can just one v five, you know. Right. So it's really important that you. That's why people have said in the past you want to make scrims like LCS, where you don't die to random gangs, so you don't you don't waste time. And uh, you know, you know, you know, for us, like, like we're we're losing time. You know, we're not getting that much practice too, right? But they're also losing time too, like the other teams who who remake by five to ten minutes because if they can't get those basics down, then what what ends up happening sometimes is in real games when they play versus us, we'll we'll amass such a huge advantage. Like we can just mess up later team fights, right. and, and you've seen that sometimes when in our games we'll like throw a random team fight. We'll be like, oh, we lost there, you know. And you can you've seen that in the TSM game. You can see that in I think like the Coast game or something like that we were, we were behind a lot, but then oh well, I guess that doesn't really make sense. I don't know. There there are, there are games yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, not to spend too much time on this last thing, but just because I find it so interesting. You guys have famously gone to Korea in the past to scrim these Korean teams. Do they do the same thing? Do they also say like GG at five minutes, GG at 10 minutes? Is this something that you think is possibly holding back the North American region if they don't? Um, so the way Koreans really scrim is they, I think they usually do like a best of five mm -hmm. and then they'll just play out the games like completely, you know? Yeah. And it just kind of makes like a, a more serious, you know, like team environment, like, like you know, scrimming, like practice sort of thing. Uh, what 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 will end up happening is like there there are already like these like high caliber teams right that can just always play versus each other, but when we when we went to Korea we we didn't want to waste their time so we made sure that we you know didn't do random deaths and all that stuff you yeah. know we made sure to get all the practice that we could get so we just played out all the games and I do think that the best way to scrim is really just you know just play it out you know even if you're behind in the early game just try your hardest to communicate and come back and make the comeback because. E it might not happen that much in LCS, yeah. but what if you're in that scenario when you went zero and three in the level one, you know? Like the game's not over, yeah. but the game's gonna be really hard. But it's really up to that team to make sure that they can come from behind. And that's kind of what I try to work on. And that's really important just in, in general practice because just because something goes bad in the early game doesn't mean that you should tilt, you know, not talk, 
just like stop talking completely, you know, shut down and not communicate with your team because, you know, even if you're behind, you can still like take advantage of maybe they use like a flash on you. You can make it maybe make a like a, a counter gank or something like that, you know, and that can get you back in the game. And that's something that we CLG used to have a problem with, you know, because so many bad things happen in the early game and it will just end up making the whole day just go on. Wash. Yeah, a wash, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. It's just strange to me because it feels like teams now are going through such crazy efforts, making sure they have the exact same monitor. Like some people are replicating like LCS, like seating arrangements and that kind of thing. But it, they then just completely change everything by like quitting every five or 10 minutes into a game, which is not how it's played out at LCS. So I do you think that final question then, do you think that if, if all the North American teams agree to not do this, that maybe the region as a whole would get better. Is this, would that be a better option if if people just play out the game until it's like at least late game or very very obvious that it's over? Like it's not about like North America just agreeing to it. You know, it's it's about the players like individually. They have to pretty much just grow up and just suck it up. You know, be like, all right, you know, I I fucking died at level one or level two. I messed up, guys. But what can we do next to get back into the game? What is next? You know, that's like the most important question that has to always be asked. And, you know, if if that person is shutting down, say like the mid laner like died, right? Then it should be it should also be up to the top and, you know, the jungle or the support be like, Hey, you know, Link, what can I do to help you? You know? Yeah. And that's that's something like if you have emotional support and even just like physical support from your teammates, like they're trying to help you, you know, and you get that feeling, it'll just make you want to play the game even more. And that's that's what's so important in, in a team environment. And that's what creates the team, you know. Just because one player is doing bad, it's up to the other four players to help them come back up. Okay. So it shouldn't always just be on that one person to like carry the game, you know. And and if it is that play style, then it is to make sure that the other four support them in that in that sense. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh Link, do you have any shout outs, plugs, anything you'd like to say to any of the fans out there? Yeah, uh, shout out to Travis for being the number one interviewer in LCS. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And marking doing the camera. Uh, besides that, shout out to our sponsors: uh, Razer, Twitch, I Buy Power, Cellicore, Sandisk. Um, thanks so much. Also, shout out to the fans. Just keep watching us. We're trying our best in every single LCS, even in practice, and trying to get better at whatever we're trying to get better at. So that's pretty much it. Also, if you like this interview, then you can. Follow me at Twitter, at CLG underscore link, and like me on Facebook. Damn. Actually doing some self-promotion. That's impressive. Pro players don't tend to do that. What a professional person. You can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports at ongamers.com.